Steph Curry, he was looking different. I mean, electric from the jump. We're going to pick this one up in the first quarter because the Pacers, they, they couldn't stop mm. his three-point shot in the opening quarter, and Curry knew it. Well, I mean, he hit all six of his first quarter threes. Well, the biggest issue with Steph is that if he's attempting threes, you haven't done your job. And it's a very difficult job. And you see where he is. Your job is to make him You'll give him a layup versus allowing him to get cooking from three. Right there, he had two people on him. But even then, if he's able to dance, you're not close enough to his body. But Steph Curry, he makes everybody pay if he's able to attempt threes. They were up 45-34 after the opening quarter. Now the second, just over five oh. minutes. Steph Curry, once again, Austin from the top of the key. He can shoot anywhere on the floor, man. Off the dribble, on the catch, his patience. Ooh, Look at this, he shot a, like a 20-foot floater. I'll take that and, shot over a three and, any day. And on the flip side with the Pacers, that's this is the reason that they're not going to be able to elevate uh. and be an uh, actual threat in the Eastern Conference. They don't play defense. They one-sided. Well, that was Curry's 10th three of the night. He finished with 42, 11 of 16 from three in the Warriors win. We know Steph is the greatest three-point shooter ever, mm -hmm. but, but as Meek once said, there are levels to this, my friends, and Steph shows that yet again here. Look, he has 13 games with 11 three-pointers. That is the most in league history. Clay. Yeah, Hold the, ten, down, the 10 more, it's even a bigger gap. When you go 10 or more, Clay's further away, in my yeah. opinion, and then Steph's even pushed at. The 11 is... is that's kind of slotting it a you little bit. <laughs> well, no player has more than four, Not. which is huge. And in, after the win, let's take a listen to what Steve Kerr had to that say. Trade clear. We had a great start to the season, and then obviously things, you know, kind of went uh, went haywire. But um, this feels like the best version of us, you know, just the, with the starting lineup playing the way they are, um, bringing guys off the bench who are, are giving great energy and effort and, and um, execution and, yeah, it's uh, it's a definitely a nice run that we're on, and um, you know we gotta gotta keep keep carrying it forward. So let's do some little glass half full here because the Warriors they've actually started to play some pretty good basketball as of late. It lines up with Draymond Green getting moved back into the starting lineup, and over that span, the Warriors they have looked like their Ooh. dynasty, really dynastic form from the mid 2010s. You can see the numbers there. So Brian, are they starting to move in the right direction? Don't tell anybody about this especially here in L.A. Mm. Over the last 10 games, the Warriors have been the third best team in the league. If you got to give me my spreadsheets and my whiteboards, they've been the third best team in the league over the last 10 games. They've won five of their last six. Last three losses they've had, two of them have happened in overtime, one of them in double, and the other loss was one by one point to the Kings. They are defending better. They are shooting better. Kuminga is playing better. Um, they are very quietly getting threatening. Now, I know that it's very hard to trust this team. But when Steve Kerr, someone who I respect a great deal, yeah. says we are turning the corner, I respect what he says. Now holding on to it and keeping the momentum going is something else. But I'm telling you, while we're all focused on whether Clay's going to finish, what they're going to do with Wiggins, what they're going to do over here, what they're going to do over here, what's going to happen in the summer, they have very quietly, while on a long road trip, been getting the job done. <sighs> Let me apologize to Steve Kerr because I've been very critical of him over the last night no, was warranted. So <laughs> let me get it was warranted. Okay. But respectfully I was right, uh, but still uh, apologize. Yeah, but okay. a little bit because I, I kinda overdid it a little bit, which is cool, right? But at the end of the day, here's the thing. When I look at the Golden State Warriors, are they moving in the right direction? Yes. In the championship direction, no. But as far as their youth movement, hell yeah. Because it was a point of time well, we could actually sit up here and say, what do these young guys actually got to offer? Like, what's their, like, we were wondering, like, what is uh, Kaminga is going to be in the league? What is, like, we were wondering that. Like, you sitting up here saying this, but you were the same one uh, making these faces, but you were the Don't same one arguing with me about two months ago about how low his IQ was. No, and no, they no, could, no, no, I no. I didn't say no, he, I didn't no, say, basically, I said he didn't I, have 10,000 okay, hours. I didn't say okay, he had but, a low but, IQ. Okay, but what I'm saying is you were sitting up here, you were sitting difference. up here with your face, uh, yeah. fixing your face when I, I was this. begging for You're more You're supposed Kaminga, to be apologizing right now. But I was begging for more Kaminga. You was acting like I was saying something wrong. If and Wiggins didn't forget how to play basketball, he would still be no, on the if, starting no, lineup. If Draymond, here, if Draymond wouldn't have got suspended. Agreed. It, for a okay, bunch of accidental so, things No, happened. no, but it, but it took that to open the eyes of Steve Curtis – to show yeah, it the took world? multiple suspensions, and it oh, took God. it took multiple suspensions, and it took an individual. So what direction? Forgot, so what direction? Can what I direction are they moving in? Can I finish? You didn't let me can finish. I, what direction are they moving in? I, I'm gonna tell you if you go ahead. Me, okay. Go ahead. 
it took this, and once these guys, once, what happened? Wiggins has been playing better basketball. Yep. Draymond is finally back off of, which really feels like a first half of the season suspension. And we know the numbers when Draymond is playing, the numbers for their team defensively, offensively. So now Draymond is back. He's in the starting lineup. He has a better, he has a much better groove. So now Kaminga is playing better basketball. But if the all-star starter in Wiggins didn't forget how to play basketball for 18 months, Kaminga would still be where he is, and that's coming off the bench averaging seven, eight points a game. It was a and bunch of things that gave him the opportunity. But we'll, we'll do, if, if, Don't make it but, seem like he no, just pushed no, over no. these guys. It gets a little tougher. Their opponent, Indianapolis, is not exactly the Phoenix Suns. No. So it's time now for setting the pick, brought to you by ESPN Bet, the official sports book of ESPN, because the Suns, they are in Golden State. Who are you taking in that one, Perk? I don't know. I should have took off today. I'm, yeah, I'm going to yeah. take, the, I'm gonna take yeah. the Phoenix Suns. You're going to take the Phoenix Suns in that one. Richard. Oh, I'm just going to go opposite of anything he says. Okay, so you're taking the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Brian? I want to take the Suns because it's a come homecoming game for the Warriors and usually don't play coming off the trip. But I think I think Steve Kerr has convinced me the Warriors are going to win this game. Okay. Austin? Yeah, both teams are playing really well. Um, I'm going to stick with the Warriors, though. You know what? I, I'm hoping that this is the beginning of them putting the run together and getting back into it. Well, Brian changed his changed pick. pick. Richard changed because his pick. Because also Booker is questionable to him. But the team who arguably improved the most, oh yes, that would be the New York Knicks. Because before acquiring both Boyan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks, New York's odds to win the title, they were 25 to 1. That's all according to ESPN Bet. Those odds, they went all the way down to 18 and 1. By far the biggest change in the entire league. But that's not all orange and blue skies all the time right now in the Big Apple. Because remember, our Adrian Wojnarowski reported yesterday that OG Ananobi, he had surgery to remove a loose bone fragment in his right elbow and will miss a minimum of three weeks. You can take a look here. Some key players missing for the New York Knicks right now. That actually amounts to over 80 points per game. Right? But let's look at the big picture, though. They're currently tied for third in the East. They just made some impactful moves. So how much closer are the Knicks to being title contenders? Well, the issue is, in my opinion, is because we talk about how important it is for them to be high in the standings. You see that list of players? Mm -hmm. It only takes a couple of losses, a couple of this, some, you know. So what I'm saying is that their team is more talented. They have better pieces around their stars. They are closer to being a high-level championship contending team than they were the day before. Right now, which we know to be key, they've got to be in one of those one, two, three, like in that one, two, three spot. If they drop down, in my opinion, two. They need to two. If they drop down past that, then they got to go either a Milwaukee and a, you know what I'm saying? The path gets exponentially harder. And if you're in that spot, your odds drop. Right, so it, to me, they are in a much better spot than they were last uh, last night or two nights ago. But those injuries, they the, where they're slotted is a big piece of it, and all of those injuries for a stretch of games that could really hurt them. What's wrong with you, Park? They're top five for his teams. I got the whole league uh, or the whole the East. The whole league when it comes to team to uh, contenders. Wow, we're go out in a stretch. Con Park. Contenders <laughs> in the league. I didn't. Interrupt you, please don't interrupt me. Richard, There's no chance with that buck hide. Okay, yeah. listen, I have the Denver Nuggets in no particular order, the Clippers, mm. the Celtics, the Knicks, and the Suns are my top five contenders. That is what they are right now, no matter what. Okay, I feel like they're going to weather the storm throughout this stretch while they're dealing with injuries, and but when they get healthy. They're actually they're going to turn into the storm, and they're going to run off ten to fifteen games in a row, and we're going to be oh, back to what? We, okay, they just look, ran off nine okay, just, without making a trade. Look at this. Look at this group. So if you bring that back up, if you're without, in the East, if you're those teams two through five, there's not that much difference. Look at Cleveland, Milwaukee, New York, Philly. Those four teams are going to play off to play the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. We'll see what happens with the Heat, but those four teams are going to play off. So, health is obviously hugely important. And then secondly, who can get home court? That's why that number two seed is extremely important. Yeah. The number two seed is more important than the one seed. Because if you have the two seed, like think if you're Cleveland. Cleveland, we know, had trouble getting out of the first round. Yeah. If they get the number two seed, that means you get a play-in team. And if you get through the first round, you get home court in the second round and potentially in the big matchup in that 2-3 matchup. Yeah. So what New York needs to do is weather this storm, 
keep their situation alive to get that two seed. That two seed is a huge fight. It's probably the most important f amongst all the top seeds in both conferences who wins the two seed in the East mm. is the real battle, and the Knicks are into it, but they got to manage these injuries. I think that's a great point. Uh, them getting home court advantage would be huge for them. Yeah. Uh, the problem is they do have some guys out pending injuries. We'll see how long that takes. It does help that they got Burks, Bogdanovich, guys who can help score, make plays. The Knicks are a good team. Um, they are a top-tier team. I think if any time with the drop of Embiid out and with Milwaukee figuring its, its, you know, its issues out, this is a team that could really contend and do something.